Greetings and welcome to St. John's Weekly Devotional. My name is Pastor Lauren Bruno. I'm so glad you've chosen to take 10 minutes out of your week and to spend it with us. As you prepare to do this devotional, make sure the space around you is prayerful. See if you can light a candle or even just find a quiet place for 10 minutes to go as a family or on your own. Find a way to make this time something that will be nourishing to you and calming, preparing you for the rest of your week. Each week, I will share a little bit of scripture, prayer, song, and reflection with you and give you something you can take into your week. This week, we're going to start by continuing with the song that we started last week. So please do join in. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first Believed. Our reading today is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 1 through 5. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called my delight is in her and your land Mary. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. In Isaiah 62, we hear a promise ringing out, rising up from God, and though it might be a little while since you last read the prophet Isaiah, I hope that the promise itself sounds familiar. We hear it all the way from Genesis to Revelation, from the rainbow stretching over Noah's ark to God's promise that the new Jerusalem will descend upon the earth, a land in which there is no more pain, no more tears, not even death will remain. It's a promise of redemption, of salvation, a promise that love can rise out of hate, that hope can come out of despair, that even life can rise out of death. It's a promise of transformation. Now, it doesn't mean that people don't have a part in the transformation of the world and of themselves. They do. We do too. We call this work repentance. It's turning away from what is broken and sinful and hurting our neighbor and turning back to God and the way that God has given us to live. It's the work of recognizing our own sinfulness and brokenness within the world's sinfulness and brokenness. God tells us that this too can be transformed, that we can be a part of the transformation of the world, even with our own brokenness. It means we don't have to be perfect to take part in this work. And in fact, to take part in this work, it's important that we recognize that we aren't perfect. And it's a good thing because all over the world, we can see a desperate need for transformation. We need God's promise that life could rise out of the brokenness and pain all around us. We need to hear that the whole world, ourselves included, could be transformed. In the Hebrew scriptures, which we know as the Old Testament, you might hear the word remember quite a lot. Whenever God comes back to the people trying to get them to hear this promise, to take part in it, to repent of their brokenness and turn back to God, we hear a call to remember. 
It's a call to trust God because this is the God who carried them through the Red Sea on dry land. That this is the God who led them to a land flowing with milk and honey. That this is the God who brought water pouring forth from a rock and manna falling down on them from the heaven. God asks them to remember that transformation, even miraculous transformation, unbelievable transformation has happened before and it can happen again. That God lives up to God's promises and that we can trust in God's promises in the future, no matter the pain and brokenness we see around us. But this call to remember demands that the people act on their memories. It's not a passive action to remember. It's an active dedication to trust in God going forward if we have been able to trust in God in the past. God asks them to remember transformation and trust that it can happen again. And the same is true for us. We're asked to do the same thing. So this week, I invite you to take a few minutes when this devotion is done or pause it at this point. I'm asking you to take a few minutes, five minutes, to remember. Remember where you've seen transformation before. Where has God been faithful to you? Where have you seen change in your own life, even where it might not have seemed possible? And then, holding these memories firmly in your mind, even writing them down if that helps, turn to the present. Ask, where do I see a need for transformation? Where are my neighbors crawling, calling out for change? Where does my own heart cry out for change? Where do we need transformation in myself, in the community around us, and in the world at large? This week, as in every week, I'm giving you an activity to do on your own or with your family Look to where there is a need in your community this week. That's your assignment. Whether it's hunger or homelessness, domestic abuse or loneliness, racism or illness, grief, pain or something else altogether. Look online or in the paper to see what organizations are already doing good work around this issue and ask how you can help. Reach out, check out their website, find a way If you're having trouble finding an organization or a need in our community, feel free to reach out. I'd like to be a resource for you in this way. You might be able to volunteer your time, give your skills, donate items needed, give money, or serve in some other way altogether. But find a way to serve, even in a small way, and be a part of the transformation in your community. Whatever your gift, remember to be in prayer as you do so. Enter into prayer and pray to God for the courage to continue the work, but also that God's spirit might enter in and be a part of the transformation. Ask God how there can be a transformation here as well. And then as you go about the week, please send us your prayers. Your prayers for the community and the world at large, as well as prayers for yourself. We'd like to enter into this process of transformation with you. And then as you go about your week, I'd like to send a blessing with you. May God, who leads you in the pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world and share the good news. Thanks be to God and amen.